Hey everybody, it's Dick here. At long last, I'm with the UK production version of the Royal Enfield Interceptor in Orange Crush, or Orange Candy, depending on who you ask or what press release you read. It is, of course, the long-awaited oil-cooled 650 twin for which we have waited over two years. It boasts the Harris-made frame we've been hearing about, as well as running specially-made Pirelli tires designed for this bike alone. There are, of course, some changes from the pre-production model, the production version does not include the SNS exhaust cans promised with the pre production model. It also has a very ugly passenger grab rail that is thankfully bolted on and removable. But thankfully, it appears to remain the bike we have all been waiting for. The cockpit is clean and classic looking. The handlebars have a nice rise and a support beam between them. The indicators and the Controls look a bit budget, but I'll forgive that. And I'm definitely going to change out the grips if I pick up one of these bikes. The stock exhaust looks good enough while we wait for the aftermarket versions to be available. Overall, the fit and finish is commendable, and I'm excited to see it in person. Let's see how it rides. Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm on the Royal Enfield Interceptor at long, 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 long last. This is a UK production bike. First day it's available for demoing and it's probably no surprise that I've been waiting a long time to get on this thing. A couple of differences between the bike that was making the tour of Britain back in the past couple of years. I don't know if the production... I have to look... I have to compare the pictures I have between this production one and the and the demo one that's been going around, the pre-production one. But I have to say the power, it's smooth. It's a very smooth bike. There's no real character yet. I'm just kind of going 40 miles an hour and there's no real kind of torquiness. It doesn't feel overly powerful, but it doesn't even feel like there's a potential of power, but it's very, very comfortable to ride. It's very manageable. I was thinking that the handlebars look like there's a, a bit higher rise to them than uh, the ones I've had, than the ones on the pre-production bike that I saw, but I don't know. Wind is all right. Wind's kind of hitting me right between the shoulders, right in the chest, and I don't know if that's going to be an issue at speed, but for now, at 40, it's very comfortable. It's different than the Royal Enfield that I own. The classic Royal Enfield single cylinder is very torquey, tractor-like, tank-like, and at 40 miles an hour, you feel like you're going 60. At 40 miles an hour here, I feel like I'm going 30, so it's not as spirited, but it is more, it is more practical, I suppose, and it's more functional. I wouldn't say it's fun yet, but at these low speeds, about 3,000 RPM, 40 miles an hour, there's a good there's a good range of power. I haven't really shifted. I think I'm in third gear. This bike has 12 miles on it. <laughs> oh, now, I'm sorry. It had 12 miles on it. I've gone two miles already. It's got 14 miles on it. It's a brand spanking new bike, and it, it rides really, really... It doesn't feel limited the way the Classic did before it broke in. It feels functional right from go. I still haven't shifted. It's really got a nice nice range. The shift lever is weird on the foot. You kind of have to notch your foot in there and kind of point your toe down and, and then kind of really think about getting it out when you want to get it off. It's 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 more of a sporty stance on the on the pegs. You're a bit further back than I had expected it to be as well. The handlebars I think are a little higher like I said and so I'm really quite comfortable. I might loosen these bolts and rock it back a little bit to be a bit more relaxed but it's not uncomfortable. It's very tame. You know all the marketing is about you know f a ton of fun. You know they're using the ton to say it'll go 100 miles an hour but I'm, I'm resting on the fun thing. This isn't as fun as my classic yet. It's definitely a good looking bike. Seat height is perfect height for me or for us short people. Yeah, not a lot. I haven't really pushed it past 3,500 RPM yet or 4,000 RPM. So not re I think the power might be up around there. It's oh, it's starting a little spirited now. I'm 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 not shifting. I'm keeping it a lower gear now to see if I can rev it out a little bit. And there it is. 
just about 3500 RPM you start to feel where the power is on this thing and it's getting a little vibration in the butt but no vibration in the handlebars no vibration in the foot pegs but I kind of I'm welcoming that vibration in the seat because it's it's telling me that it's a bike there it's so tame that I'm kind of I was wishing for a little character and now I'm finding it Lane splitting is fine on it. I'm in a narrow little spot here in this line of traffic, getting right through it. A little rough shoulder there, not feeling uncomfortable. Brakes are competent. Balance is nice. I'm, sm I'm smelling the machine oil that was on all the uh, and all the metal bits burning off right now. It's a little taller than the uh, pre-production as well. I'm kind of just off my heels from flat if I'm putting both feet down, and the foot pegs are spring-loaded because if they weren't I would be really wrenching my um, I'd be really wrenching my calves on them because of the positioning of them really odd positioning don't want to speed through this construction area but I'm curious to see where where the power is on this bike oh there it is 4500 rpm yep 4500 rpm is where that power is it's not not bad I do have to lift my foot up to shift out of that little slot that it's in. It's comfortable. It's comfortable, it's mellow. This is a good entry-level bike, I'd say, so far. I'm, I'm gonna try and push it to see if there's some more performance where... I mean, it's not, it's not as spirited as I hoped. I'm very excited to be on it. I'm very happy to be on it, but it's not as characteristic. There's not as much character as the Classic has. It is a very usable motorcycle. And I think, ultimately, most people want and need usable motorcycles. So this has the looks. It's got the classic looks and it's usable. So, you know, in terms of in terms of making a motorcycle that will sell to the masses, in terms of introducing a lot of new riders to the pastime, this will do well. And actually getting some people back into motorcycling, this will do well because those older folks grew up on bikes like these. It's not, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to run out and sell my classic to buy this. That's how I'm feeling about it. But it is a very competent motorcycle. Competent, that's competent and manageable. But you know, I am just riding through a boring town for now. So if we can find something a little more interesting to ride on, maybe we'll get a different take. I mean, it's there. I mean, there's something there. There's something there that I haven't tapped. There's something there that I haven't tapped. And I'm, I'm wondering if I can tap it. I mean, really, Royal Enfield is looking for a bike that can go on the highway. It's a little boring. <laughs> Here we go. All right, little turns, a couple of turns. Let's see. All right, we got a zigzag sign there. Not bad. I think what I have to do is look at this not through the lens of a Royal Enfield enthusiast, but just through the lens of a, as a motorcyclist. And it's usable. It's a usable bike. It's a handsome, usable bike so far. Shifting is predictable. Braking is predictable. Seat height is good. Ergonomics are good. Now this is where this is why they're doing the twins, because they want to make a bike that can go. I'm gonna go. It can go. Wind's not that bad. The foot peg position is forcing me to go forward a little, to lean forward a little into the wind, but it's not really blowing me off the way I expected. And it can go. I mean, there was no, there was no question. Yeah, it can go. 4,500 RPM is where that power is. And it goes all the way up to red line. And it's smooth coming down. It's not jerky coming down with engine braking. Oh, it's smooth as hell. Yeah. I went up for my friend on the bullet. <laughs> I just cooked him. I just cooked him.
I mean, it's smooth. It's smooth coming up to speed. The shifting is smooth, other than that weird thing happening with my, with actually getting under the shifter. But once it's there, I'm not bothered by it. Wind isn't bad either. I took a pre-production version of this out for a ride and I felt like I was on a parasail and I was holding on for dear life or I was gonna be ticked off the end of the thing. I'm going 60 miles an hour at 6,000 RPM. I got another gear, 5,000 RPM up to 65, 70. I've smoked the bullet that's riding with me. It is very comfortable on the highway. A little bit of a speed wobble. I don't know if that turbulence is from the wind. It's not a particularly windy day, but... Oh, and I have another gear. 5,000 RPM, 75 miles an hour. Sixth gear. Nope, that was fifth gear. <laughs> wow, that's competent. All right, it's shining out here on the highway, and I'm feeling the power now. The power really is up halfway between zero and red line on the tachometer. And coming down from speed is extremely smooth. Extremely smooth. You can tell that this is thought out. This is a thought out motorcycle. The motorcycle is not, I don't think it's meant to be idiosyncratic in its ride. It's meant to be usable. This is a very usable motorcycle. And it's got, it's got power, it's comfortable, it's good looking. It is a very smart motorcycle. It's smart. And I think it's a great platform that if you want to make it quirky, if you want to make it quirky, you can. Engine braking is so smooth. It's, oh, wow. Yeah, I think I found where it shines. It doesn't shine. Maybe that's what it, maybe that's what it was. I was looking for it to be as characteristic as the classic on these little back roads, but really, if you get this thing up to 4,500 RPM, that's where the fun is, that's where the performance is, that's where the, the life and character of this engine is. Where on the classic, it's all low down, it's sitting, you know, it's, it's on the boulevard. This is, um, this wants you to push it a little bit. This is unlike any motorcycle I've ridden in a very long time because of how thought out it is. It's awesome on the highway. It's awesome. It, I mean, it's so smooth. I was like, I'm gonna see if he can keep up. <laughs> wow. If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, have a good one.